What's going on, everybody? We are live for AMA Thursday. Let me know what questions you guys have for me. For the next 45 minutes, I'm going to answer whatever questions you have, whether that's about entrepreneurship or Amazon FBA or being a digital nomad or whatever else you can think of. So drop them in the chat boxes and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. While we wait for a few of the questions to come in, I do want to announce that we're giving away 12 copies of the Founder Book. So the Founder Book is written by Founder Magazine or the same people who run the Founder Podcast. They've put together a lot of their best episodes into like actionable insights of how you can help grow your business. It's an $80 book and we're giving away a dozen of them for free. So we're going to drop the link in the chat box now. It's 100% free. You don't have to enter. Uh, you don't have to pay for shipping or anything else. It's an $80 book. I'm covering all the costs because I'm a big fan of it. You just enter AMA to redeem your book and we're going to drop the link in the chat box. There's only a dozen of them available though. So it's on a first come first serve basis, whoever is the quickest. All right. The first question is from Salome. Is, the question is, is Alibaba easy to navigate? Do you need training? Overall, Alibaba's relatively easy to navigate. Um, let's talk about real quick what Alibaba is. So Alibaba is a marketplace where factories can advertise their goods to end users like ourselves, okay? So unlike Amazon or something, you know, you don't go to Alibaba to, uh, you know, you don't like check out on Alibaba. You go to Alibaba to find factories, and then these factories, you then communicate with these factories, you work out the pricing like with these factories, then you end up purchasing um, directly from the factory, not through Alibaba, okay? So that's what Alibaba is. With that in mind, there is some things you need to be aware of, okay? So like you wanna find high quality factories. So these are factories that are like easy to communicate with. Um, you do need to be kind of be mindful of scams. It happens to a very small, small, small percentage of people, but I don't want any of our audience for that to ever happen to. Um, so there are some things that you need to kind of like know and understand there. I would recommend for you to go to our million dollar case study. Just go to junglescott.com forward slash million. You can find the million dollar case study there. And we've done two episodes that specifically talk about how to navigate Alibaba and how to go about finding a good factory um, from there. Next question is from Irvin. What's the buy box? This was from YouTube. So the buy box is when we look at an uh, Amazon detail page, if you're looking at it on the top right hand side, there's a little box and in that box, there's like the add to cart button. Okay. That's what we talk. That's what we're referring to when we talk about the buy box. So if there's lots of sellers on one listing, we'd say you have to kind of like compete for that buy box because only one person kind of like controls the buy box at a time. And all that means is when someone clicks like purchase product or check out or whatever it says, the one seller who owns that buy box at that time, they're the one that gets that sale. So this isn't a concern if you're a private label seller um, because you should be the only one selling that product. But if you're like a reseller or selling the product like other people are the same product that other people are, um, that's when you have to start thinking about like trying to win or control the buy box. All right, let's see what else we have here from Barry. Does VPN stop Amazon working? Um, I think the question there is like, is it okay? Can you use a VPN when on Amazon? Um, as far as I know, I think that's fine. Yeah, as far as I know, I think I've had a VPN. Sometimes I turn on VPNs when I'm in a place that I'm worried about the security of like the Wi-Fi, and I've never had a problem with it. So I think that's fine. Russell Ferroni said, Greg, do you have any coaching programs at Jungle Scout? Or if not, do you have any recommendations for trustworthy educational coaching providers? Good question. Um, we don't have any coaching programs per se at Jungle Scout. We do do a lot of case studies like the million dollar case study where we show you step by step how to launch one of these products on Amazon. Okay. Um, as far as like one-on-one -on -one coaching, I don't know of any off the top of my head. Um, but that'd probably be a good question for maybe like the Facebook group. If you search on Facebook, the FBA Competitive Edge, you'll find our Facebook group. In there is a whole bunch of really helpful people. So I'd encourage you to join and that'd be a great question to ask in the Facebook group. And maybe some other people could recommend who they've used for coaching um, to help them with their Amazon business. 
On YouTube, Bobby said, hey, Greg, what are your thoughts on inspections? Do you recommend a full inspection or a pre-shipment inspection? My first like two years selling on Amazon, I never did an inspection once and I don't have any horror stories from that particular period, okay? That being said, sometimes it is difficult to ensure like high quality control like when you're working with these Chinese factories. Um, so now how I think about it is I think about what's the overall purchase price. So if I'm ordering say like $2,000 worth of units, it's like, well, if I get a $200 inspection, that's like increases my cost by 10%, it may not be worth it. I might rather take the risk of it not being inspected. But if I'm doing like a $10,000 order, then to me, it's like a no brainer. It's like, okay, now we're only talking about an additional 2% and it ensures that my products are like of high quality and I'm getting what I order or what I, ins what I expected. The most common type of inspection is going to be a pre-shipment inspection. So this means after all your goods are completed and they're sitting there in the warehouse, getting ready to be loaded up into the container, that is when the company is going to do the inspection and um, make sure that all the goods are of high quality. You know, the barcode scans like it's supposed to. Is there the right color and size and weight and whatever else you're you know, your specifications for that particular product are. Um, so yeah, if you have a really high value order and you want to take it one step further, the next type of inspection you could do is like a DURPRO. So that's a during production inspection. And the big benefit of that one is you try to do it when only like 20% of the goods have been, have been uh, created, have been manufactured. So that way, if there are any problems with it, you can catch it earlier and it's much easier for the factory to fix the units that they've already created and to make sure they stop making those mistakes on the other 80%. Because you have to imagine, after the factory's created all the goods, all 100% of them, if there is like a major problem where they have to like open up all the packaging, fix something, it's gonna be a lot harder to try to convince that factory to do that after all the goods are completed. So. Um, that's something you can keep in mind. If you're only going to do one though, I'd still probably just do a pre-shipment inspection. Um, and another little like hack or something you can do is have your factory set, take pictures and send you pictures during the process. Um, and that way, oftentimes you can find like little things that are wrong. Like, wait, wait, wait a second. My packaging is not supposed to look like that. Uh, you put the back on the front and the front on the back or whatever else, you know, you can, you can start to spot things like that. All right. On YouTube, Bohr said, Greg, how did you handle and what did you do about declaration of conformity and test reports for CE, REACH, etc.? cetera? Um, our factory has a REACH certificate that they gave to us. Um, Kim handled this, so we would have to ask her, but it was my understanding she gave that certificate to our freight forwarder who does the customs stuff for us. I guess they then give that to, um, you know, whatever the UK customs agent, however they end up communicating with them. Um, so that's what we do with that. I don't think we were required to have a, any type of CE certificate. Um, yeah. All right, another one on YouTube from um, Himanshu says, I want to understand how Jungle Scout gives monthly sales figures of products. Good question. All right, so what we do is we've created models in-house. We have a data scientist who works on this full-time. We've created models that model the relationship between the best seller's rank and the unit sales of a product, okay? We have a whole bunch of real sales data. So this means like, you know, this glass on um, Amazon, we know it sells four units per day and it's ranks like 1,000. Now we have like a million products like that. So what we do is we have all those product sales data. And from there, we can create models to model the relationship between the best seller's rank and the unit sales. Now, any product that we... Um, now, once you've created those models and those relationships, then you can estimate sales for all products on Amazon. It doesn't have to be like one that we know the true sales for. So that's how we um, create our models. We found them to be very effective and plenty accurate enough for like product research or forecasting purposes. And yeah, that's how it works. 
All right, from Salome. Hello, if I'm planning on to sell in the Canadian market, what are some strategies to use so I can still profit even though I'm paying for inventory in US funds? Um, I don't know any like exact strategies for this regardless of what currency your product's gonna be selling in or whatever currency you're collecting for your sales. Um, you just need to work out the proper exchange rates for that to make sure that, you know, if you're purchasing these goods in US dollars, that your margins and your profits are still there. Uh, even if you're selling in a different currency, like Canadian dollars or British pounds or what have you. All right. On YouTube, Mike says, as a European selling the USA market, you have, do you have any third party warehouses that you recommend using? So I don't. So my freight forwarder, um, you know, they ship my products for me. I primarily ship Ocean. They unload the containers at their warehouse. They put the boxes onto pallets. And then in some scenarios, I will store those pallets at their warehouse for like a month or two if I need to. But I typically don't store any goods. I typically just ship them right into Amazon. The only time I store goods is if like I ordered way too many and i think i'm gonna get hit pretty bad with amazon storage fees so yeah I, so a, a warehouse isn't really necessary for me therefore i don't really have one to recommend you use um i think most freight forwarders do have uh the ability to store your goods at least for a short amount of time for you if you ask them to do so <coughs> Another question from YouTube. Do you recommend to start with a lighter product so you can ship by air? Air shipping is very nice. It's convenient. It's less paperwork and therefore it's easier for you to get started. If it's your first product, then I would kind of recommend finding a lighter product so you can ship by air because you'll get it into Amazon faster. You'll build that momentum. You'll start to get your first sales. And what I've found by working with a whole bunch of um, entrepreneurs, especially people starting to sell on Amazon, is that oftentimes it the only thing stopping these people is like mental, right? It's you get bogged down because you're um, you're overwhelmed by using a freight forwarder. You get bogged down with something else, and then you start to get discouraged, and you, you think like, okay, I can't do this. This is too difficult for me. So, especially when you're starting out, I do recommend keeping things simple, getting going quickly, keeping up the momentum. Because once you get your first product in, you figure out how it works, you start getting sales, then you get an additional level of like an excitement, right? Like you're stoked, like you're making sales, you're making money. And then um, after that, it's easier, you know, to like launch more difficult products or products that are, uh, yeah, just that would require like more paperwork or like more headaches or whatever else. Jamie Reed says, is Splitly compatible with vendor accounts? Unfortunately not. Splitly works for FBA accounts or seller, you know, any products that you have in Seller Central. Vendor accounts like Vendor Central and Vendor Express doesn't they don't have an API, which is how software talks to other pieces of software. So they don't have a way for Splitly or any other piece of software to talk to vendor accounts. So right now it's a technical limitation that Amazon has. Jake says, I'm about to choose my first product. What timelines should I be aware of in order to not be slowed down by the Chinese New Year? Jake, good question. This is a time, a good time to be answering it because the factory is pretty much shut down for the entire month of February, which means if you want to get an order shipped before Chinese New Year, you need to place your deposit probably in the next like week maybe two weeks because this is also a busy time of year for them because all sellers understand that they they need to get new orders in to get them shipped before the chinese new year because you know if you don't if you don't place an order in the next like week or two then they're gonna be shut down for the entire month of february that means like march one you'll put down your deposit but it won't ship until like the end of march right um so that means like your price not going to get in until April. So if you want to get started in the next couple months, like you really need to be thinking about putting a deposit down for your product in the next week or two. 
All right, on YouTube, Josh, I just ordered my first sample yesterday. I'm nervous and excited. Congratulations, Josh. That's awesome. That is the first step, and I have faith in you that you can do it. Luke said, hello, what are your thoughts on a sourcing agent? I've been posting in the Amazon FBA Facebook group and had one contact me. Can they be helpful for a newbie? Um, they can. I have mixed feelings about sourcing agents. Um, a good sourcing agent can get you better pricing and overall can be cheaper. Um, however, most of the time it's more expensive using a sourcing agent because they, they tack on a fee on the top, you know, cause they have to get paid too, which makes sense. It's perfectly fine. The other, again, like the other good and bad side is the bad side is sometimes it can be longer to communicate with the factory because you have to tell your sourcing agent and the sourcing agent has to tell the factory if they have a question they go back to the sourcing agent that goes back to you so you can imagine like the the chain of communication there can some times get bogged down but i guess at the same time a good sourcing agent will help you like keep a higher quality control so um Overall, I'd probably not recommend for people to use them, at least starting out, unless it's a sourcing agent that becomes like very um, highly recommended from someone else that you know that's been using them. I think that's probably the only time. If I just had one contact me, I probably wouldn't use them. Carrie said, are your jungle slumber bags at Amazon yet? No, they're not. <laughs> um, we, we got bogged down with setting up our UK Amazon account. It took like three or four weeks for it to get approved. So our original idea was to ship some by air to get them into Amazon faster. But since it took so long for our UK Amazon account to get approved, it is approved now. So it finally happened. We decided just to ship the entire shipment by ocean. So they're not going to be into Amazon for probably like two more weeks. If everything went to plan and we hadn't gotten slowed down by setting up our Amazon account, um, we would have already had an air shipment arriving like this week, but that's just how it goes. We, uh, just like all entrepreneurs and all businesses, we run into like little hiccups and road bumps along the way, but we're not going to let it discourage us. Um, I'm confident the products are still going to do well once again to Amazon. They're just getting into Amazon a little bit later than we had hoped. Isn't the hooded baby towel patented? How do you get around it? I'm having problems figuring out what is and isn't patented. A, a baby towel with hood, I think, was patented at some point, but it was expired. If you go back and look at the patent, you'll see that it expired like 10 years ago. I think patents only, I forget, they last like 20 years or something. I forget how long. Um, so, yeah, that's just something else to be mindful of when you're doing the patent search and looking at that stuff. Make sure that it is an active patent because they do expire after a certain amount of time. All right. Robertus on Facebook said, hey, big brand selling pricey item and private label sellers copied their product visually. Just added some other stuff with it. No patent. Will you advise to go with this? Just make a bit, a bit different than others. Um... It's really hard to say by just the um, limited amount of information I have to go off there. Um, you know, overall, I'm looking for products that are in high demand with low competition, good margins, no legal issues. Um, so I guess just with the information you give me, Robertus, it's difficult to know for sure. Jake said, I'm about to choose my first product. What timeline should I be aware of? Oh, we already answered once in this. Uh, to not get slowed down by Chinese New Year, you need to be placing your order in the next week or two, or else it's not going to ship out before Chinese New Year, which means the factories are shut down for all of February. On YouTube, OV said, at what point do I set up the Amazon Premium account? I think what you're talking about here is the Amazon Professional Seller account. On Amazon, there's two types of accounts. There's an individual account and there's a professional seller account. The professional seller account's 40 bucks a month. Um, with the individual account, every sale you make costs you $1 extra in fees. So if you sell 40 products or more per month, the professional account pays for itself. And with the professional account, you get access to things like the API, pay-per-click, whatever else. So, um, 
pretty much once your goods arrive at Amazon, you're ready to start selling. That's when I'd recommend getting the professional seller account. <clears throat> All right, another one on YouTube. Hey, Greg, at what point did you start to create a brand on Amazon or are you more about creating random products and not a brand? I'm about the latter. Creating random products and not a brand. There are different schools of thought here, but my opinion is I want to create and sell whatever people on Amazon are buying. Okay? I don't, I'm not going to create like a baby products brand just because I have a hooded baby towel. Like I'm not going to go ahead and launch like other baby products just because they're in my brand if they're not good products on Amazon. I'm only using Amazon as my only distribution channel. So, it doesn't make any sense for me to sell like baby bibs if they're like low demand with really high competition. That just makes no sense to me. So I'm just going to sell what is in high demand with low competition. It doesn't matter if it like fits into this cohesive brand or not because that's not how people on Amazon shop. People on Amazon, they go to the search bar, they type in what they want. They then look to see what the best product is, the best combination of like reviews and price and pictures and features and whatever else and they purchase that product. No one knows about my private label brand. Like there's not um, there's good, not good like brand recognition about the Jungle Snugs baby brand like in the US. So no one's searching for my brand. They're just searching for a hooded baby towel and they're purchasing this product. So as you can probably tell, I'm a pretty strong believer in my particular methodology. But of course, you can uh, adjust that if you're really passionate about creating a brand. I just I don't see the point in it. When I export direct from China to the U.S., what kind of taxes do I, what kind of taxes uh, do I have to pay, and what are the legal processes? Duties in the U.S. are pretty inexpensive. Um, essentially, if you ship by air and your products are worth less than like two thousand bucks, you normally don't even have to pay any duties. Um, I think technically. You're supposed to, but for whatever reason, the customs just doesn't. If it's worth less than like two thousand bucks, it's, I guess it's not worth them to try to collect it. Um, the legal process: if you're shipping by like air courier, so by that I mean like DHL or FedEx or whatever else, the process is super easy. If you're shipping by ocean, the process is um, a little bit more difficult. But what happens is you end up just hiring a freight forwarder to handle the process for you so they take care of all the paperwork and whatever else so the legal process is essentially you hire a freight forwarder and they handle the legal process what are the issues another one on youtube from sally ma what are the issues that seller central account can get suspended for when you first set it up occasionally when you set up a brand new account like the first day it will say like you're seller account has or your selling privileges has been suspended until you submit these documents and essentially they just want to verify that you're like a real or like everything you told them was correct so like that actually is your name you might have to submit like id if you submitted a business they want to verify that that, that is a legit business so <clears throat> those are like the reasons that it gets suspended like that first day um your account can get suspended you know like after that down the road but these would be for things like breaking their terms of service, like paying people for reviews or whatever else um, you're doing that's illegal and against their terms of service. I got my logo printed on the product that has my LLC name. What's the next step to get a registered brand? This is on YouTube. Brand registry now requires, or I guess this isn't that new anymore. It's like six months old. Now requires a trademark to get a brand registered, okay? So um, to get a trademark, you have to register it. You can either use a lawyer to do so or there's some online platforms like Trademark Engine and I don't know, if you just Google like register a trademark, you'll see a bunch of them. Um, you have to register the trademark. It costs a few hundred bucks and takes a ridiculous amount of time as do all things when you're working with the government. So it takes like six months or eight months or something. After you have a trademark, then it's very easy to register your brand on Amazon.
Diego on YouTube said, after we found a product we like on Jungle Scout, is there a way to know how the specific listing is ranking on Amazon for keywords? The best way to do it is to just search for some keywords that you think are relevant for that product and just check to see where they're ranked at. Um, yeah. Anthony said, besides using JumpSend, what is the easiest and fastest way to get reviews? Unfortunately, there is no other good way to do it that's within Amazon's terms of service. As all you guys probably know by now, I'm a strong believer of always following all of Amazon's rules. So I like to be very mindful that I'm always following their terms of service. So besides sending follow-up emails, there's no other good way um, to increase the number of reviews that you get. You can try to like put a little insert inside of your packaging to ask people to leave reviews, but I don't think that really increases the number of reviews you get that much. Marcel said, isn't FBA exclusive to professional accounts too? I don't know. I thought FBA could be used by individual accounts, but I don't know. I, I, I've had a professional account for a long time now. I can't really remember what the days were like before that. So you could be right. I'm just not sure. <clears throat> On YouTube, Josh says, my supplier says he can't ship straight from China to the FBA center for X amount. Will I have to pay anything else with clearing cuts? Oh, my supplier says he can ship straight from China to the Illinois FBA center for said amount. Will I have to pay anything else with clear and customs? If you're shipping by air carrier, which I assume by this, <clears throat> so that means like DHL, FedEx, UPS, and it's less than like 2,000 or 25,000 or 2,500 bucks, then customs usually doesn't care. They just let it clear right away. I guess it's not worth their time to try to track you down and get a little bit of money out of you. Um, if it's a larger amount, three, four, five thousand dollars, then you probably will have to pay duties. It depends on the product category of how much duties you'll have to pay. There are some that are duties are really high. Um, there's like these anti dumping fees. Um, and then there's other items where the duties like 2%, 4%, whatever else. So you just have to check with your respective um, product type to see what the duties are. But like I said, if it's less than like 2000 or 2500 bucks, you usually don't have to pay any at all. All right. On YouTube, Malaku said, uh, is there a certain point in sales you aim to hit before looking for a second product to source? I've seen most people say 10K a month for your first product before adding a second. Thanks, Greg. Not really. Um, I don't let like the number of sales from the first product slow me down from like sourcing my next one. So, I mean, if you want to come up with kind of like an arbitrary number like that for yourself, that's fine. Um, but for me, no, I don't have a certain point. All right, <clears throat> another one YouTube says, question, is that in Amazon terms to use your product's link as an affiliate? Like I have a website and links to my Amazon products are affiliate. Um, so if I understand correctly, this doesn't break Seller Central's terms of service, but it does break the Amazon affiliate program's terms of service. So yes, it's not allowed. I guess you're not risking your seller account, but you are risking your affiliate account. Whether Amazon enforces that or knows about that or not, I don't really know for sure because I haven't tried it, but that's my understanding. All right, Rafik says, my FBA inventory went from 200 to zero overnight. Is there a glitch with Amazon? Has this happened before to others? I would check. Rafik to see if it's in um, reserved inventory. So sometimes um, the inventory is reserved while they're transferring it to a different distribution center or maybe someone purchased all 200 units. Um, if you didn't set up your coupon codes properly and you have been giving out coupons, there is a chance that someone could have bought all 200 units with a deep discount on your coupons. Um, those are the things I'd be looking at if I was you. 
Terrence said, what defect rate do you work with? Many factories work to a 2.5% major defect rate, which is quite high. Would you negotiate to improve that or drop the supplier altogether if they said that? No, I think 2.5% is um, acceptable. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about that. I think that's fine. <laughs> On YouTube, Carrie said, besides the US, what is the second best country in terms of demand to sell in? I have a product with good profit margins. How should I prepare for that? The two largest countries after the US are going to be the UK and Germany. They're the two with the highest amount of demands. Um, congratulations for launching a product, a great product with good profit margins. As far as preparing for that, it's not as scary as what a lot of people make it seem like. Just Google Jungle Scout VAT and what should pop up is our, we've created this guide to VAT. We have a really good video. We did a great write up on it. And what we found was like on the internet, there's all this information about VAT, but none of it's like specific for Amazon sellers or none of it like really made sense to us. So we wrote about VAT in layman's terms to make it very easy to understand. And what you realize is it's not that big of a deal once you just understand how it works, just like on most things in life, I guess. So I'd recommend checking out that blog post. We might even try to drop it in the chat box now. On YouTube, Andrew said, for starting with automatic PPC, do you suggest to go with the suggested bid or bid higher? If you are just launching your product right now and you're trying to get those initial sales, then I would go, I would bid a little bit higher than the suggested bid to help you get some of those sales, to get more impressions and go from there. Warren said, if you find a good product to sell but is restricted on Prime, can I sell it as a merchant? Yeah, you can. Um, be a headache if you had to do all the fulfillment yourself, but that's you can definitely do that. It's possible. Heard me on YouTube said, hey, Greg, my product arrived at the Amazon warehouse today. Super excited. Congratulations, Hermie. That's awesome. Um, I remember... The first, like the first day when I got my first sale, and it's like the best feeling in the world, right? Because like you put all this work into it, you do all this research, you know, you're watching all this content to learn this. When you get that first sale, it's like okay, it's like all panned out. I can do this. It does work. So um, you have a very exciting day ahead of you. Salomon said, "Do you know anything about the Amazon Merchant Program to sell T-shirts? Not really. Um, I've just read a little bit about it. You know that." I'll, content other people have put out. I've never tried it myself. I'm not too familiar with it. Um, not really educated about it enough to give you guys um, some advice on it. A best-selling item in a niche completely vanishes from Amazon. What are the possible explanations? Maybe they had enough traffic to their own website that they no longer needed FBA or banned. Um, they probably just ran out of stock. I think you're probably overthinking it. Um, this time of year, inventory management is more difficult because some of the items are selling really well. Um, so yeah, I think you're overthinking it. I bet they're just ran out of stock. Like when a product's out of stock, Amazon doesn't show it in their search results. Um, because you know, that's obviously a poor customer experience. If you're clicking on items and it's like, nope, this is out of stock. Sorry. Excuse me. Trina said, when searching for UPC codes, I've seen get free UPC code here. Are these types of websites okay? I don't know. I'd probably just pay for one. They're not very expensive and that seems a little fishy. Having a hard time getting good pricing for shipping from Freitas. Is this a seasonal thing that prices go up? When should I expect to come down to normal price? Yes. This time of year, the prices are significantly more expensive. They all are throughout Q4. Um, it's very much based off supply and demand. So demand is very high this, this time of year, but they don't have like extra ships to put in to, uh, to be working. So because of that, the prices go up significantly. You could probably expect prices to come down um, pretty soon because most of the Q4 stuff needed to already arrive. 
Um, so maybe in the middle of this month. Is it legal for me to use someone else's ace to use somebody's ASIN when the small icon is have one to sell? My item is identical. Um, sorry, not quite. I don't think I understand that question. I'm sorry. Maybe you could try to rephrase in a different way. I can see if I can help. Is there a product on Jungle Scout that has an opportunity score of 9 out of 10? I've found one product that has an opportunity score of 10 out of 10. And I think I've only seen like two products with an opportunity score of 9 out of 10. So keep in mind like 7s and 8s well, are still good. 8s are fantastic. And 9s and 10s are... Um, we put very high standards for those. So don't feel like you have to find a product with the opportunity score of 9 or 10 in order to, um, you know, in order for it to be good. In order to get approved to sell in a restricted category that requires three invoices, what would be the best way to go about doing this if it's for your first product? There is quite a bit of information online about how to get ungated from these categories. I think people will come up with quite a few like little tips and tricks and hacks to get the invoices that you need. I don't have too much experience with this particular thing because my seller account is very old. So I was actually like grandfather, like I set my seller account up before um, gated categories even existed. So I don't have too much experience in that. I'm sorry. Is it okay to print FDA on a product or is there any procedure for it? Yes. Do not print FDA approved on your product without having legit FDA approval. So <clears throat> if this is like a supplement, then the factory you're buying it from probably already has FDA approval, especially if it's in the US. Well, they might. If that's the case, then you could legitly print it on there. But that I, I'm sure that's illegal to print that on there without FDA approval. So yeah. And getting FDA approval if I'm um, correct is quite expensive, so keep that in mind. Is it better to ship with FBA or FBM? FBA. Short answer. With FBA, they'll be eligible for prime shipping. You don't have to do all the pick, pack, and shipping yourself, which would suck. You just send your goods into Amazon's warehouse and they ship the products for you. Do you feel that the FBA market might be oversaturated at this point? No. Amazon is growing so fast. If you look, you know, there's some really cool statistics online and um, the number of customers is growing so quickly. Are there more FBA sellers on Amazon? Absolutely, without a doubt. But I don't think the number of new FBA sellers have outpaced the rate at which the marketplace itself is growing. So that's my opinion. How many discounted units do you usually give away in the launch? I normally do about five to eight per day until I start ranking where I want to be or to the point that I'm getting lots of organic sales. So that might mean only three or four days of giving away discounted units. That might mean um, that I have to do it for like two weeks. but. I don't just like set a number and just do that number. Like if I start ranking well, even though I've only given away 40 units or 20 units, then I'll stop. If I'm not ranking well yet, then I'll keep going until I start ranking well. Regarding search keywords, I've heard something about trying out merchant words. Can you advise if there's an alternative? Yeah, you could use something like merchant words. Um, Google has a keyword planner keywords dot or keyword tool dot io is one um lsigraph.com is one these are all products that give you keywords to help you put in your listing um or wherever else <laughs> do you need to hire a freight forwarder if you are air shipping your product if you're using an air courier like TNT, DHL, FedEx, UPS, then no, you don't have to hire a freight forwarder. There is something else called Air Cargo, which has better rates. 
Um, but you do have to use a freight forwarder for that. When we're analyzing the products in the top 10, there are too many BSR very low. What is the criteria for it? How many of them out of the top 10 should be under which rate? So I, I actually personally don't really look at the BSR. And for anyone who's not familiar, that's the best seller rank. So that's the rank for the product. And that's because BSRs vary widely depending on the category. So a huge category like health and personal care or sports and outdoors, a BSR of like 50,000 still sells really dang well. Whereas a small category like appliances, a BSR of 50,000 probably only sells like five a month. So I only think about it as unit sales. You know, I use Jungle Scout, of course, to figure out the unit sales of a product. And I just go off of how many units are being sold, not the BSR, because the BSR, it's uh, it just varies so much like category to category. It's not really that useful unless like you had like a really good chart to show you all that. Hey, Greg, when I'm setting up a shipment on Amazon, what should be the ship from address if I'm shipping directly from my supplier in China to Amazon? If you're not using Amazon's shipping services, the ship from address actually doesn't matter at all. So you could put your supplier in China, you could put your house, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The only reason Amazon needs to know the ship from address is if you're using their services. So like you're buying like UPS labels through Seller Central, or you're buying a uh, you know a trucking company through Seller Central or whatever else. So yeah, it doesn't matter. All right, we have questions for about two or three more. Can I delete a product listing with bad reviews and make a new listing after making a few changes to try and improve? Yeah, you can. You just create, you know, you create a new listing with a new UPC. Um, you would then get a new FN SKU, and then when you mail those products in, they would go to the new listing and not the old one. All right, on Facebook, when he said, "I'm going, I'm not going to restock one of my products. It is selling great because of the holiday." Should I raise the price or let it sell out before Christmas? Um, if you're not going to restock one of your products, then I would just try to get as much money out of it as you can. So I'd probably try to raise the price a little bit. I wonder why you're not restocking though, because you said it's selling great. But yeah, I'd probably try to raise the price a little bit. <laughs> Mr. King on YouTube said, Greg, would I be allowed... Or what do you think of printing my FN SKU on an insert card that can be seen through a poly bag or on the bag itself? What else do I need printing on my packaging? I love Jungle Scout. Um, technically, it is allowed to print. You are allowed to print your FN SKU on an insert and put it on the inside of a clear poly bag. However, you need to be mindful to make sure that that could always scan. So. If we think about, okay, like why do we have to do this is because, you know, the person in the warehouse picking and packing the shipments, they have a little laser gun, they scan the barcode and it has to like show up on their computer. So if that's like a hang tag that could like flip around and they could not see it, then that would be bad. Um, it would probably be, so you can do that. It'd probably be safer and better though to print it on a label and put it on the outside of the poly bag. Um, but I have had it on the inside of poly bags before. You just have to make sure that you know, even if this thing's like bounce around, ruffle around, or whatever, it, you could still always scan it. All right. Jordy said, in the listing, most sellers put the brand name at the start of the title of the listing. Is this good practice? We're opening up a can of worms of this one. There's different schools of thought, and some people are quite passionate about it. I believe that it's best to not put the brand name at the start of your title. It's my belief that the keywords towards the beginning of your title are weighted the heaviest when Amazon's indexing the keywords. If it's a private label brand, no one really knows about your brand, so you're not going to be searching your brand name. So I prefer not to have not to kind of like waste those keywords with um, your private label brand. Other people argue that it is important, um, but that's my uh, thought. That's it for today, guys. We have to wrap it up. I have to get back to work. We're still making Jungle Scout better every single day. I appreciate you guys for joining us. It's been a fun morning. I hope everyone has a good rest of the day, a good weekend ahead of them. Congrats to everyone who got the founder book. You can also get Jungle Scout t-shirts on our Facebook store. We'll drop the link in the chat box. 
and I will see you next week. Thanks, guys.